Hello there, everybody. This is Bryce from the Bro Bryce Blogs channel, and yes, my hair is trashed. I've been sick for like four days, and I'm really, I'm really sick of being sick. I, I, I don't know. I've been sick a lot lately, and I'm, I'm really tired of it. I'd like to not be sick. Um. Started, I think, Thursday morning and started getting like a little bloaty in my lower gut. And then by Friday, I was starting to get a few cramps. And by Friday night, uh, I was down at the service center. And normally I stay there, I don't know, I stay there, close the place down and uh, sweep the place up and whatever. But I couldn't really stay. I was pretty miserable having bad cramps. I could hardly move. So I came back home. And that's really the last time I left my house, really, for any sizable period of time. Uh, been drinking lots of water. Taking vitamins. Um. Now I've got, I guess, on again, off again, fever. It's a really bad fever. It gives me bad chills. And I'll just end up sitting here shivering. Um, right now it's uh, like 60, like 67, 65 degrees in here. And, uh, and I'm not really cold. I'm sitting here in my shorts and t-shirt. I'm not really cold. So I think the fever has abated for the most part. Uh, then just mostly in bed and like bed, restroom, bed, restroom, maybe sit up in bed and lay down in bed and go to the restroom pretty much. Um, just a miserable thing. I've been, uh, dog sitting. Diesel, come here. Come here, boy. Come here. This is, uh, let me introduce you guys to Diesel. You've met my other puggies. You've met my other dogs. But I don't think that you've met Diesel. He is my little buddy. Anyway, uh, my friend Ken and Julie have gone to Hawaii for the week for their honeymoon. And they're getting married. And Diesel loves his Uncle Bryce. Hello. Hello, Diesel. And, um... While they're enjoying their time in Hawaii, they're coming home tonight, and I've been appointed to watch after Diesel the Minpin. And uh, uh, Diesel is a very energetic little doggy. He's only about 20 pounds, maybe. Diesel, are you trying to be on camera? <laughs> Anyway, he's very energetic, and he's very lovey. He just loves people. And um, uh, one one problem that I've had with him in the past is when I watch him, you know, that uh, normally when they go out to go potty, I'll put him out in the yard, and uh, they can be, you know, pretty much they're okay out there on their own to handle their business. And then they let me know when they want to come back in, and everything's cool, everything's groovy, but Diesel, being the energetic little guy that he is, he can jump the fence. The fence is like four and a half feet tall. Diesel needs a leash in the yard. So even though the yard is fenced, we have to put a leash on him in the fence just to keep him from jumping the fence. So he's got this leash that's got this little, you know, mountain climbing carabiner thing on it, on the end of it. And I clamp that onto a bungee cord on a post outside my house. It's on the outside of my house. And um, that's kept him in the yard for the last week. Works great. However, today, he jumped the side fence with the leash still on him. So he literally just, as I was telling Ken and Julie before they left, so what's the worst that can happen? 
is he'll jump the fence and he'll be sitting on the other side of the fence wondering why can't I go anywhere I'm over the fence I should be free right anyway so he ends up over on the other side of the fence my next door neighbor texts me thank you Texts me on Facebook says uh, the nin pin is over in my driveway I think he hopped the fence and sure enough Diesel jumped the fence and he was sitting over there crying because he couldn't go anywhere. It was so sad. So I picked him up, dropped him back on the other side of the fence, and um, brought him inside. Um, haven't been able to spend a lot of time outside lately. I want to get the Bro Bryce Gardens channel back up and running. In fact, I was going to shoot some videos with my buddy James this weekend but I couldn't really get out of the house I was just miserable just in a lot of pain a lot of cramps and um, I need to go see a doctor as from what I understand this Giardia thing it doesn't really go away you may end up with less symptoms or no symptoms but you still have it you might be a carrier you could spread it to other people so Giardia I know it's nasty. If you look it up, it's pretty pretty gnarly. It's G I A R D I A Giardia, and what you get from it is Giardiasis, which is basically infestation of Giardia. And uh, Giardia is a kind of uh, microorganism parasite that attaches to the walls of your small intestine, and they have these little you know flagellum tentacles. So they have like a sucker here. And they have this flagellum and they stick up to your side of your intestine. And I've um, seen pictures of uh, uh, intestine that's just covered with these things. And uh, it causes bloating and distension and um, all kinds of miserableness. And it causes you not to be able to absorb fat properly. And it causes you not to be able to absorb water properly. So you may be dehydrated, you may experience weight loss, anorexia. I know, crazy, huh? Um, you end up with a bloated stomach, but no skin on your bones, that kind of thing. Uh, just, it's a nasty, nasty bug. And I guess your body can somehow adapt to it, and then you just carry it around with you or whatever, but that would be nasty too, so... I need to go see a doctor and get rid of this thing because you can, I guess you can carry it around with you for years even. Most people, I guess, experience problems with it for weeks, but it can, there's no really defined life cycle of these things as long as they're getting what they need. They just continue to exist, I guess. So uh, I'm going to try to get in to see a doctor today. That would be fabulous. I need to see a doctor, but I don't know. It's like, they're going to want me to get a stool sample. I just know this. That, that's just that's just pleasant, isn't it? Don't you just love thinking about that? Um, anyway, along with... I'll just change the subject because I know you want me to. Along with uh, watching Diesel, the min pin here, I've been uh, watching his girlfriend, Mish the cat, uh, or at least I was supposed to. So when Ken and Julie went off to their honeymoon, they assigned me to also bring the cat inside and uh, let the cat in at night and let, let the cat out in the morning. And uh, I don't know, those of you that know me, you probably know that I'm not a cat person. It's going to make me less popular, I know, but I really don't like cats. I... I pretty much hate cats. I don't know why, but most cats still like me. But I don't really like cats. And I've had some really bad, bad, you wouldn't believe me if I told you, bad experiences I've had with cats. I just don't like them, and I think they're just mean little monsters. And um, much as I would like to like them, because they're really soft and furry and cute and everything, I just think that they're obnoxious little monsters. And uh, I'm sure that the same can be said of dogs. I don't have any objections to that. 
I just happen to get along better with dogs. And I haven't had the bad experiences with dogs. Well, not so much. And so, you know, have mercy on me. I don't like cats. I think this cat knows this. Um, usually when I'm over at Ken's place and we're just chilling on the couch, the cat will come right up and hang out with us and like snuggle up to me and stuff. And uh, while I'm not crazy about that, you know, it's a cat. Just want some love. That's cool, right? Uh, I've had cats do that and then turn around and pee on me, like deliberately, like turn around, raise their tail, spray all over me. So <laughs> it's to me, it's like it's no indicator. If cat comes up and snuggles with you, it's no indicator that they like you. But I really thought kind of this cat liked me. But they put the cat outside in the morning before they left, and they wanted me to bring the cat in at night. So for the next three days, I spent like, you know, between half an hour and an hour out in front of and behind the house trying to get the cat to come inside. The cat would come right up to the, to the house and not come inside. The cat would, uh, oh man, the cat, at one point the cat actually came like two feet inside the house while I was walking Diesel back out to the car because I figured, you know, let's use Diesel because, you know, they're girlfriend boyfriends, like this forbidden love thing dog and cat whatever anyway um they're they're best friends and so i took diesel out to, out to the car and the cat's sitting out in the walkway staring at the door goes up to the door goes right up to the door stops at the door and starts taking very careful little slow little steps toward the inside of the house and ends up like two feet inside the house i come up behind the cat to close the door and the cat just turns around, bolts outside, just past me, and did not come back. And I couldn't get within three feet of the cat after that. I tried for, you know, another day or so to, to do it. But eventually Ken had to call from Hawaii. He had to call his next-door neighbor and line it up with her. And I gave her a key to the house, and she went in and let the cat in. And it took her like five minutes to get the cat in. Go figure. She's a cat person. I can't really compute what cats think and why they do the things they do. And I'm not trying to complain. It's just I felt bad because I was appointed to do this task and I I couldn't get it done. Um, for whatever reason, I'm not a cat hunter or a cat whisperer or anything like that. Maybe if I had a live trap or something. I don't know. Cats seem to be interested in food. I put I put cat food outside for the cat. Because uh, I didn't want her to starve. But, I mean, it was freezing temperatures and it was raining outside. I would have thought that she wanted to come inside, but she wouldn't. She wouldn't cooperate. Uh, outside of that, my wife is coming back from Reno, California. Or Reno, Nevada tonight. Actually, I want to be picking her up. And then I'm going to be picking up Ken and Julie from the airport. So we're going to have a carload of luggage and people and uh, hopefully everybody will fit uh there she's coming back like 10 and they're coming back like 11 something like that and uh should be should be sweet um i'm still pretty sick i may end up having julie drive back home or ken drive back home because i'm pretty miserable and that late at night, when it gets colder, I might be pretty cramped up. And it's been pretty bad. Uh, I dribbled on long enough. I, I, I have an, uh, an acting gig maybe tomorrow um, with uh, Michael Perrazzo of Zoom Media. But I'm, I'm, I don't know. I don't know if I can do it pretty much in pain most of the time right now so we'll have to see i want to i want to do it i want to get out there and do it but like i said i was supposed to do sound on sunday yesterday and set up for that on saturday and i couldn't do that i did uh teach at the school on thursday and friday and then i shot another short film on friday that i still have to edit but i've been just been in bed not really 
I mean, after after the service center thing, I just came home, laid down, and I just didn't really get back up for any period of time. Uh, anyways, pray for me. Uh, today is day one, for those of you that know what that's all about. Not great, but it's a new start, right? Day one. Yesterday was day zero. Uh, if you want to know what that's all about, then PM me on Facebook or here on YouTube, and I'll probably tell you. Anyway, uh, have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon.